Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can create this design right here. This is a 4th of July design, but it will really work for any you know, patriotic holiday, anytime you want to wear red, white, and blue. This is obviously for an adult and it says red, white, and boozy. So if you would like to learn how you can create this design, go ahead and stick around. So here we are on Canva's home page and we will be making a design for a t-shirt today. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the top right hand side of the page where you see custom size. I'm going to click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Now that will pull up a blank page. And for today's design, I'm going to be designing for, um, let's go with a black shirt. Black is the number one selling colored t-shirt, um, followed by usually navy or a dark heather gray. Um, then you know white will be up there too so I, if at all possible i'd like to make a design that goes on both white and black now for today's design we're doing a fourth of july design now fourth of july is coming up here in a few weeks um so we want to get on this really quick there's a whole bunch of cool fourth of july designs up there this one is going to say red white and boozy and this of course you know for adults only so we're going to start super easy. I'm going to start with some text boxes. So I'm just going to hit T on my keyboard and that will pull up a text box. And then we're going to start with the word red. And I'm going to do this in a few different boxes. So I'm going to pull up another text box by hitting T on my keyboard. Next one is going to say white. I'm going to pull up another text box. This one I'm thinking I'm going to do just the and symbol. So let's go with just the and. All right. And, and then one more text box. And this one is going to say boozy. Okay. So there is my basic um, words right there. Um, if I pick some fonts, there's all sorts of different fonts you could use. I wanted to go with something a little bit scripty. Um, you can play around for a while after playing around. I just decided to go with one that was called um, Banthel. Let's see right there, Banthel Regular. This is one that I got off of Creative Fabrica. So there's tons of fonts on Creative Fabrica. Some that you pay for, but a, a bunch that are just totally free. Um, and so you can always go on Creative Fabrica and look for a font that you want if you can't find one, but Canva also has just a ton of fonts. So, um, you know, if you look around, you should be able to find a bunch of fonts that work well for what you're doing. So I'm just going to start by doing something like that for now, and I can play with you know the rest of it a little bit later but for the red i am going to go ahead and make it a red color so i can you know pick out which particular red i want later i'm going to leave the white white the boozy i'm going to do a blue color um, because i do want this to also show up on you know either a white shirt or a light gray shirt or something like that i'm going to go ahead and do a little outline around the white so i'm going to go to effects and I can use outline. And here what I can do is just do the blue outline around it. That way I can still see it if it's on a lighter color. For the red, I'm thinking I might do a little shadow and I might do a shadow that's white. To lose the transparency here. I'm gonna bring that offset down a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing here with boozy with a nice white shadow. Okay, get rid of the transparency, bring that offset down, and the and, I'm thinking I'll do a little outline around, and I'll do that blue outline around the and as well, something like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be picking some drinks. So the idea here is to get a red, white, and blue drink. 
Um, so I'm looking at cocktails here. So I'm going to go to the left hand side of the page up to the tab that says elements. If I click there, I'm going to now do a little search for cocktails. And there will be a ton of different styles, both in graphics and photos that you can look for. I'm going to go ahead and just start with graphics and see what I can come up with. So there's tons of cool cocktails that we can use for different colors. Um, so for example, you know, I'm just going to start pulling up ones that might work. There's one that kind of has a reddish tinge to it. Here's another one with a reddish tinge. Here's one that has some red in it. And so these are just options. And so what you can do is just click on all of them and drag them off. And what that will do is, well, it'll save them to your recently used. So then when you want to see all the ones that you picked, you can just go to your recently used. It'll show all of them and then it's easier to select. So that's how I select things if I'm looking at a lot of different images. Apologize, I don't know, my internet or something is not working very well right now. Everything's going really slow today. So as I'm going, I'm just selecting drinks that I think will look good, either red, white, or blue drinks. Occasionally I'll click on something, magic recommendations will come up. If that's the case, I might hit see all and look at some of the different uh, magic recommendations. I did like that red drink right there. I thought that was kind of cool. Here is a, a few, you know, cool blue drinks. So lots of different options for different kinds of blue drinks out there. Um, in terms of white drinks, well, the best white drink I think would be a pina colada because those actually are a white drink. And so if you happen to find some pina coladas or search for some pina coladas, those work pretty good for the white. So once you've gotten a good selection of drink possibilities, what you can do is close down this section where you did the search. And then you can go where it says recently used and hit see all. And what you're going to see is all of your recently selected things here. And so then you can start playing with which ones you think look well together um, as well as on their own. So what you want is, is drinks that are going to look like they belong together. So for example, if I was to take this pina colada, because I didn't have a lot of options for pina coladas, um, so I'll probably end up going with this one. So let's say this is the pina colada that I know I'm going to choose, so something like that. I want my other two drinks to match that pretty closely. So if I went with this martini, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's totally a different style. This is more of a watercolor style, and this is not. Plus, this has a good amount of transparency in the stem, which you can see through the stem. It's got some transparency that probably won't print very well, so I'm probably not going to go with that one. There's another one right here that looks like it's a lot closer to the same style, and so that is one that I could use that's got that sort of blue to it and it is in a very similar style glass and so that's a good one and then again with the reds I'm going to pick a red that looks like it kind of goes with this as well so for example something like this again is a somewhat different style versus something I kind of like this one here which again has that cool stem with the little bulb on it so they kind of look like they go together they're all sort of watercolors so these are probably the ones that I'm going to end up going with. So something like that looks pretty cool. I'm going to bring my text down here. And so now what I'm going to do is kind of figure out how I want the layout to work. I want them all to roughly be close to the same height here along the top, but they're going to have sort of different lengths here. So that looks pretty cool. Now because the B, you're going to see the capital, um, is going to come up higher. What I kind of like to do would be to make it so that you can see these kind of offset go down where that B is. And so that can kind of come sit a little bit lower and this one can kind of come sit a little bit lower and then this one can be a little bit higher on top of the B. And so that works kind of cool there. Don't worry about where it is in the page because once we get this kind of lined up together, we can just kind of regroup it and move it wherever we want. I'm not entirely sure I like this and sign. I think I can do better. And so sometimes what we can do is just a search, um, a graphic search for words too, um, words or symbols. And so sometimes I can just look up the word and, 
And if my computer wasn't going so slow, it would pull up. Yeah, here we go. Lots of different and symbols. And so there's some that I could use um, that are a different style. Um, and so you can see sort of this style versus this style. I kind of like that one that looks a little bit more like an S better. And so there are several of those that I could use. Here's one where I can pick two different colors. And so that might work well. So what I might do would be to then make it white and put a little blue in it and use this one instead. So it still looks like it goes well with this font, but it's different. I can make it a little bit smaller so it's a little bit more decorative here, something like that. And so now I'm liking the way that this is looking. Let me bring this up a little bit higher. I'm probably going to end up grouping all of these together so that I can bring this a little bit higher in the page and center it in the page. And so now that's a lot better. So now it's fitting a lot better. And then what I could do is I could leave it like this or I could add some flares in the background to make it look a little bit more red, um, like 4th of July-ish. You could put some fireworks or other things in the background. I think I might also put at the edge of the... I'm going to put a comma here. And I can play with the colors now too. So I had just selected certain colors um, that I, I just wanted to pick any old red. But now that I have my drinks, I can try to make my font colors match the drinks a little bit better if I like. So if I wanted to take this red now and make it a little bit lighter here so that it matches the, the red on the drink, I could do it that way. Or I could use my eyedropper feature and select one of the shades of red in the drink. So maybe something that isn't quite as bright or dark, you know, kind of figure out what I think is going to look the best there. Um, same thing with the blue. I can pick one of the blues from the drink. And so there's a lot of different blues in the drink that kind of look cool. Um, and again, I could use my eyedropper feature here to select a blue that I like. Um, so something like that. And if I'm going to make it match, then what I would do here with the outlines would be to go to effects and change that to the same shade of blue that I chose there. So now I've got red, white, and boozy, and they all kind of match each other. Now this drink is a little bit more yellow than I'd like. So let's say I wanted to make it a little bit more white. I can go to edit image and I can do some adjustments on it. So what I could do would be either to try to brighten it up a little bit, or I can come and maybe pop the whites a little bit more, pop the blacks a little bit more. What I'm really looking to do would probably be to bring down that saturation so that it's not as yellow, but it's more white. So something like that. I don't want to go entirely black and white, but you know, I want to make this look a little bit more white and a little bit less yellow. And so I could do something like that to sort of play with it as well. You could also go to edit image and see if there's any of the filters that might look good as well. So if I wanted to see all filters and sometimes some of the, um, the soft filters will give it more of that white look or the vintage filters might give it more of that white look but still keep a little bit of color so it doesn't look black and white. I still want the cherry to be red and whatnot. So if we're looking in sort of the soft or vintage style to see if I can get something that's a little bit whiter here, the fade is looking pretty white. And so that is an option. Um, Vinto gives a little bit white in the middle, but keeps the yellow around the outside. And I can just see if these load, what these ones might look like. That gives it more of a blue shade. That gives it more of an orange shade. So I probably don't like any of those. I could try the fade and just click on it and see what happens. Ooh, so the fade made it look really white. And that's probably because I had already, you know, played with it up top. So probably wouldn't be doing that. But I can play with the intensity too if I wanted to. So I'm not going to do any of that though. We'll go with none. And we'll just sort of keep it the way that it is here. Um, and then, like I said, if I wanted to put some flares in the background, maybe I wanted to do some just red, white, and blue and see what comes up. So if you just search red, white, and blue, 
you'll get some fireworks, some stars, um, some confetti. So all sorts of different things that you could put in the background that might kind of look cool, you know, some of the fireworks and stuff. And some of these will let you, you know, do some color changes up here too, so that I could match these colors pretty well. And so just depending on, you know, what I wanted to do. So I could bring any of these to the backgrounds. That's a little bit too much for me, but you can see how I could play with any of these. Here's some stars, here's some confetti. Um, and so here's a lot of confetti. Here's some just sort of sprinkling of, of stars and stuff. And this will let me go ahead and change the colors here. So if I wanna, again, change those, bring that white down into a white. I can do this and get some of these stars. I'm gonna duplicate this, so I'm gonna hit Control D. And maybe angle it a little bit so I get a little overlap, maybe shrink it down. And so I can play with how these all line up. If I hit Control and then my left bracket, it will send something to the back. So I can hit control and left bracket until all of these boxes go straight to the back. So right now I should have, boom, all of my drinks up front and just sort of some easy little stars in the background there. And so that looks pretty cool. I'm angle that so that it doesn't go out of the and so that's pretty cool right there. So there is my red, white, and boozy, and it looks pretty cool on the black. It would probably go really good on a navy blue. It might even do good on some of the royal blues because I did use a light enough shade that it would pop, right? Um, and so it would look good on some of the brighter blues, some of the navy blues, the black. Probably gonna be a little too light for the white. I mean, I did put that, but that's still going to be a little bit too light for the white color shirt. So we will go ahead and stick with the darker colors. But there it is, red, white, and boozy. Great for the 4th of July. But the cool thing about it is because it doesn't specifically say 4th of July on it, you could use it for any kind of patriotic holiday. Um, so any time where you might do red, white, and blue, you could use uh, this. Um, and so it's, it's good, not just for the 4th of July. And so I'm gonna go ahead and title it up here, red, white, and boozy, and it is ready to go. So I can hit share, download. It's going to be a PNG. You're going to want a transparent background here. And then what we can do is just go ahead and hit download. And then you can go ahead, stick this on a shirt, a tank top, um, you know, anything that you like, tote bag, phone case, pop socket, whatever. Um, and it's ready to go. So, sorry, my computer seemed to be very, very slow with loading everything today. <laughs> so that was a little bit annoying. But um, if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Can. I do have videos coming up for a lot of different things in July and early August, so stay tuned for those. If you have any particular video requests, you can put those in the comment section below. Also check out my channel because I have over 250 videos, so there's a good chance that if you have a question, I already have a video up on it. Um, and I hope you guys are doing well and uh, you know keep staying creative and making good sales. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.